All right, folks, we're going to start off with uh, a question that uh, kind of is the basis for a lot of things that we're going to do later on in, in the year. Okay, you guys know like the sine, cosine, and tangent on your calculators, right? And if you push those buttons and then type a number in for sine, cosine, or tangent, it gives back some weird decimal, okay? I, I need, in regards to you guys getting kind of the full uh, perspective of how those numbers generate and, and what your calculator is actually doing for you, in order to explain that to you and, and make that hopefully somewhat clear to you when we, when we get to that point, we need to understand the idea of similarity for polygons, which then every triangle is a polygon, so we can, we can work with that, that sine, cosine, tangent later on and know what it's really doing. And, and my fear is that maybe in, sine, maybe in, in Azure 1 you use those things, but you just use it as kind of like cryptic, kind of like almost magic that they just give a number and they give an answer and we just do the process, but we don't really know where that process is coming from and what it means and how those values kind of interact with one another. So when I want, I want to teach you that because I think that's an important port or an important <laughs> important part of mathematics is not just being able to calculate, be be monkey see, monkey do, be robotic, and just go through processes. You need to be able to work, understand what mathematical facts and uh, concepts govern those processes, okay, and allow those processes to take place. So similarity is very important for that stuff, okay. Um, Yesterday we talked about um, similarity requiring two things, okay? Corresponding angles had to be congruent. And the other thing was corresponding sides had to be proportional. Okay, something to remember with this is that when we're starting to compare sides, okay, between two shapes, uh, the only way that they're ever going to be proportional is if we compare, like, in one shape, the largest side that comes from shape one, so I just put largest side from shape one here, compared to largest side of shape two, should then equal, like, the smallest of shape one compared to the smallest of shape two. Does that kind of make sense? If two shapes are going to be similar, if these two shapes here, these two triangles are going to be similar. I don't know. We're going to go through the check here to see if they are. But the only way in which they're going to be similar is if 12, which is the largest side in this triangle, matches up or corresponds to the largest side over here. Does that make sense? Okay, so 12 hypotenuse here is going to have to match up to 9 hypotenuse there. Okay, otherwise, if I compare 12 to either of these, they're not corresponding sides. The only way they can match up is if they're corresponding, and inside the, the logic of correspondence is that smallest matches the smallest, largest to largest, and then middle to middle or middle sides compared to middle sides. You might have like a, a quadrilateral where you've got multiple values that are um, in between your smallest and largest. But that, hopefully that makes sense to us. Uh, when we are asked to check to see if shapes are similar, it may, and we only maybe know distances, it makes sense to take smallest to smallest, largest to largest, and then uh, hopefully maybe we only have middle compared to middle then uh, for a triangle. We'll, we'll talk about more about that triangle stuff uh, in the next section. The next section talks about maybe now that we've understood how we relate things in similar polygons. We then focus on, well, how can we do this with just triangles? Are there some shortcuts with triangles? And there's some triangle similarity postulates that we'll talk about. Um, but if I want to do this, I, I want to say these two, I want to see, I want to determine are these two things similar? So the first thing we have to do is abide by that first statement that said corresponding angles, corresponding angles had to be congruent. So if these things are going to be similar, this angle A, angle A would have to match up to what angle? These are going to be similar. Angles have to be congruent, right? So angle A, is that going to match up to angle E? 
No, it's going to match up the angle D, right? Okay. So right now I'm just going to try to figure out how, do, how should I name these. If they're similar, how should they be named so that they generate the correct relationship between sides? Okay. So angle A should match up to angle D. What should angle B match up to? Okay, so B should match up to E. Uh, and then that leaves me with just the right angles left over, right? Okay. So if they are similar, they're going to have to correspond in that way because that first criteria of corresponding angles need to be congruent needs to be met. So that's the setup. Does that make sense, everybody? And what that does then, if we think about this, does that automatically say AB then, which is the biggest side here, says AB corresponds to DE, the biggest side here. First two letters are AB, first two letters are DE, right? So it's automatically going to generate that relationship that largest needs to be compared to largest, smallest to smallest, and then eventually middle to middle. <coughs> so if they're similar, and that's why I got the question mark here, I don't know yet, this is first going to have to be true. If they are similar, then the next idea is that the corresponding sides need to be proportional. And what that means is that you're going to take the first two, set, or first two points there and the first two points there, and you're going to write them as a fraction. So I'm going to say AB should compare to DE. Okay. Then we're going to take the next two. So I'm going to take BC. I'm going to compare those to EF. BC compares to EF. And then the last comparison will be AC compares to DF. Okay? And what that's going to do, AB over DE is the largest compared to the largest. If I look at BC compared to EF, uh, that's actually because they're both across from 30 degrees. So that's going to be smallest compared to smallest. And this will be the middle side, middle length compared to the middle length. Does that make sense? Okay. Now what happens, if, if they're going to be similar, these ratios, when I put the, the respective values in, those ratios should equate to be the same exact value. Okay. And there's going to be a couple different ways that we can look at that and check to see if they are the same value. Okay. So now it's just a matter of plugging those things in. Before we plug in, I just want to make sure we remember, you know, when we did the proportions and the ratios in 7.1, I talked about how I like to have a relationship about my numerators, right? Well, the relationship here about my numerators is that they all come from the shape on the left, right? They all come from what ultimately ends up being my bigger triangle, okay? I like a relationship with my denominators. My denominators relationship is that they all come from the shape on the right, correct? Okay, or the smaller shape. And if we look at just one ratio and look at the relationship that exists just right there or just right there or just right there, the linkage between a numerator and a denominator is that they are a largest side compared to the largest side or a smallest to the smallest. They're indeed corresponding parts. Does that make sense? Inside, going from one triangle to the other triangle. So we've got, so we got those linkages, and if we can, if we can maintain those, um, we're going to be able to come to our, our conclusions correctly. So now, all we have to do is plug in the values for those distances. So AB ends up being 12, DE was 9, BC is 6, EF is 4.5. And then AC is 6 root 3, and DF is 4.5 root 3. And here's the reason why I gave these values or starts off with these values is because at first glance, people might say, well, okay, 12 ninths reduces to 3 halves. And if I start comparing that to the other values up there, you might say, oh, they're different. All of them are different. They don't look the same, okay? But if you remember back to maybe some, like, standardized test questions you've had in, like, the um, eighth grade, seventh grade, whatever tests you've taken in those courses, uh, if they give you, like, four or five numbers, they give you, like, radical three, uh, 0.25, uh, two squared, 
and like pi, and they ask you to put them in order, doesn't it make sense to change those all to the same type of number, the same format? You probably change them all to decimals, right? And then you could basically put them in the right position of one another and list them in the correct order from smallest to greatest or whatever. Same kind of thing going on here. You, and I'll show you doing this with the calculator, and this is kind of the, uh, kind of the safety net default way of doing it. I'm not saying this is the best technique, okay? Uh, but we just type those values in. I take 12 divided by 9, and I get that 1.3 repeating. Okay. You guys know that if you use Desmos, you can, you can click that right there and it'll toggle back and forth between fraction and decimal, right? So that's a nice thing. Um, when we take the end of course exam, they don't give you that toggle option, okay? It'll just be 1.3 repeating and you'll have to be able to change that to a, a, a fraction on your own if you need to. Um, 6 divided by 4.5, you can see that that's the same thing. And then 6 root 3. Uh, divided by 4.5 root 3, same thing, right? Does that kind of make sense to everybody? So because I'm able to change those all to the same format, the same decimal, I can make the argument that those are three equivalent statements. So we're showing that the sides are indeed proportional. So this thing, these, these triangles must be similar. They met the condition that you had matching angles or corresponding angles to be congruent. And now you get matching or corresponding segments to be in proportion to one another. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, there's a couple other ways you can do this. My hope is that eventually uh, grabbing that calculator or grabbing any calculator is actually a little bit um, of a waste of time. Okay. And, and here's, here's my logic. And this is hopefully in the last class they, they, they kind of saw this. They said that, well, that makes sense. If we understand our math properties and our math concepts, we should be able to make an argument that all of these things are the same pretty quickly. Okay. Um, one way uh, of doing this is, obviously, I want to take that 12 ninths and I want to reduce it. They, they both divide by 3, uh, so I'll get 4 thirds. Okay. Um, now, if I look at these two, it's hard to see that these are the same, but you can. You can do one of two things. Can I cross multiply these things? Can I go 6 times 3? So I give you 18. If I go 4 times 4, what's 4 times 4? 16, and what's 4 times a half? 2, right? So 16 plus 2 is 18, right? So does that show me that those two fractions, 12 ninths and 6 over 4.5, are indeed the same thing? Okay. Um, last class, I said, well, what if, you know, we don't like this as a fraction. We, usually, we generally don't like decimals inside a numerator or denominator, right? What can I multiply so this decimal by, so this decimal goes that direction? I multiply by 10, and I move my decimal one spot. What do I have to do to the top then? Change the top into 60. Does that make sense? Multiply that by 10. So I multiply by 10 over 10, which is just 1, but change it to 60 over 45. How many times does 15 go into 60? 15 divided 60 four times. Does 15 divide 45 three times? So is that reduced to four-thirds as well? So you could do it that way, okay? This is the way that I would do it. I would first see, you know, I, I probably wouldn't even multiply. I, I probably wouldn't even reduce these. I would just do that multiplication. 9 times 6 is 54. 12 times 4 is 48. 12 times a half is 6. 48 plus 6 is 54. So there I get my cross products to be equal. And now if I look at the next two, look at these two, okay? Now it gets kind of messy, and I'm not even going to do the, like the, the explicit multiplication. I'm just going to write down that when I multiply those two across, it's 6 times 4.5 times radical 3. And when I multiply those two across, it's 4.5 times 6 times radical 3. Is multiplication commutative? Is 2 times 3 the same thing as 3 times 2? Correct? So it's 4. 0.5 times 6 times radical 3, the same thing as 6 times 4.5 times radical 3. The order there doesn't match. So are those two things equal? 100% equal, right? So now I've got the, the things in the black box. 
equal and the things in the red box are equal, what we have to check yet, and we haven't done this directly, and we were not going to directly, is to check if those two are equal. And we could cross multiply. I could take 9 times 6 is 54, and then times my radical 3 is 54 radical 3. And then I take these two and get 54 radical 3, okay? But here's the thing. If these two are equal, and then these two are equal, wasn't this one common in both? Okay, so that's kind of the middleman, right? If 12 nights is the same thing as 6.45, but 6.45 is the same thing as 6 radical 3 over 4.5 radical 3, then that means 12 nights is the same thing as 6 radical 3 over 4.5 radical 3. Remember the transitive property? If A equals B, but B equals C, then A equals C. So we can do, we can bypass that last comparison, which would be incorporate that multiplication of those, those extremes and means, or simplifying those extremes and means, uh, by just knowing that the transitive property exists, and I can make the fact and make the argument that those have to be equivalent regardless of doing the algebra. Does that make sense? And that's the benefit of knowing our properties, knowing certain relationships, is because eventually, by knowing your properties, you're going to be able to come to conclusions much faster than just kind of hammering out brute force math, okay, or arithmetic. Does that kind of make sense? So we, we, we will consider those two shapes similar. And what happens then is that no matter what we do, if, as long as our triangles have 30, 60, and 90 degrees in them, and we'll learn this maybe tomorrow or Monday, is that you're always going to have two triangles that are similar, always, regardless of what their side lengths are. Okay, and we'll talk about that um, later. But, but this stuff is building. So there's, a, there's about a two, two and a half month uh, unit about similarity that we're about to kind of embark on that, that it is going to require us to, to be able to understand what needs to be compared to what here. Okay. With this one here, so here's the idea. I want to ask you, are these two similar? I'm not giving you any, any uh, similarity statement, kind of like the last one. We had to write the last one, like ABC was similar to DEF or whatever. Um, I'm going to tell you right now that it does not make sense and hopefully you can argue this um, as well, but it does not make sense to take this shape here. Let me cut it out, paste it again. Ooh. What in the world? All right, so I've got that shape right there, right? And the argument is, well, does angle A, does it correspond to angle E because they're both right angles, right? Or does angle A actually, I don't want to resize it, I want to rotate it. Does angle A actually relate to angle F that way? Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Uh, so does it go to E, does it go to F, or does it go to A uh, compared to H? What, what is it that we're looking at here? What is the comparison of angles? And in order to make the correct assumption, I want to ask you this. Doesn't the biggest side have to match up to the biggest side? Okay. So what's the biggest side in the triangle of a rectangle on the left? Seven, right? Okay. What's the biggest side on the, on the rectangle on the right? Six, right? So by knowing that in regards to correspondence, the biggest has to match the biggest, I need to compare seven to six, and it does not make sense then to compare seven to five. Does that make sense? Because that's the biggest. I'd be comparing biggest to smallest, and in regards to them, if they're going to correspond, your biggest segment cannot correspond to another figure's smallest segment. Okay? Um, so here... This picture is it, it's kind of a you know cut this one out, slide it over, paste it, and I can go left to left, top to top, that kind of thing, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Um so if I do this and I ask, are these similar? Well we got right angles, so those are gonna match up. But if I compare seven to six, seven to six as that fraction, that's biggest compared to biggest. 
and then smallest compared to smallest, six compared to five, are those ratios the same? I cross multiply, what do I get with that six times six? And then seven times five is 35, right? Are those two things equal? No, not equal. So that means the proportions are not equal, right? Or the ratios are not equal, so it's not a proportion. So sides are not in proportion to one another. So those two shapes are not similar. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, just for just a little bit of extra information that you'll probably never need to know, would you agree that 36 and 35 are pretty close to one another? Those values are close, right? The closer those numbers are to being the same, the closer these are to being similar. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, the further the 36 and 35 would uh, be from one another, then the more drastic uh, the difference of the shapes would be. Okay. Um, I mean, that's just a little added information that you, you're probably not going to be asked about, uh, but I think it is, is appropriate to talk about. Uh, this one here, I want to tell you that these two shapes are, um, they are similar, okay, but I want you to write a similarity statement real quick, okay? So name that first uh, pentagon, however you want to, okay? Uh, and then once you name that one, that should dictate how you name the second one. So go ahead and do that, and then we'll reconvene and, and I'll ask you another question. So I... I came up with, I just named it, I started R and I went counterclockwise, I just went from one mark to two marks to three marks in the angles. Um, but as long as your R matches up with A and your S matches up with B and your T with C and your U with D and your V with E, you should be fine, okay? Uh, but you might have a different name than I do, okay? Because you have a different name than I do, you might end up with a different order of ratios here in a moment, okay? But what I want to do, I just as we write them, you're going to check off and say, do I have that ratio or whatever, okay? So one ratio I know I'm going to have to, to have is the comparison of those two, right? Okay? So I'm going to write RS compares to AB. Okay? I'm then also going to need the next two. So ST is going to compare to BC. ST to BC, and I just keep kind of sliding those blue highlighter marks down, and I'll get the next one will be TU compares to CD, and then I'll get UV compares to DE, and then I'll get VR, so V wraps around back to R, and then E will wrap around back to A. And really all that means, if I grab my highlighter here, that RS, that segment right there, is going to compare to that red one right there, correct? It means that ST in the second ratio, that segment, is going to compare to that one. TU to that one. And then we'll do... UV should match up to ED, and then run out of colors here. We'll say that one there matches up to that one there. Does that kind of make sense? And if you do so here, now it's not a big deal, this problem, because those, those two shapes are kind of a cut and paste of just a translation. They just move left and right of one another. Uh, they're, they're, their angles are in the same position or same orientation. Uh, so you could go left to left, and that would put purple compared to purple, or top left to top left, and that would give you red compared to red, right? But this process will give you the right ratios regardless of how your second figure is positioned. If it's rotated maybe 90 degrees and maybe reflected on itself, um, left and left and right and right would not work there. Does that make sense? Or you'd have to use this approach uh, that we're using with the ratios, and it will automatically set up everything that you need. 
Okay. So as I go through this, and, and this is going to be the case because there are some unknown values here in regards to, not that there's variables, but there is nothing written there for RS, right? There is absolutely nothing written there for AB. So RS over AB is actually going to be a ratio that I'm not going to be able to work with. I don't know what it is. Okay. Um, if I look at ST, is ST 18? And then I come over to BC, I've got values for those. I have values for both those things. 18 over 4. Okay. Um, TU, I know TU is Y plus 2, and CD is 5. UV and ED don't have anything written on them, so UV and DE is another ratio. That's just because they, they lack information in the problem, I can't address that, can't use it. Uh, but then I get to VR, which was X. And AE or EA, which is three. Does that kind of make sense to everybody? Just plug in once I have the once you have the ratios written as RS over AB, ST over BC, TU over CD, you've done all the geometry. The next part is substitution, which is an algebra concept, and then cross multiplying, which is another algebra concept. Okay, so. I'm going to do a little reduction here. I'm going to rewrite this 18 fourths as 9 halves, right? Okay. So what that means, what that 9 halves means to me, you can kind of think about it two ways. Okay, if I, if I take 9 halves and divide it out and get a decimal of 4.5, right? And all that means then is that if I look at these values over here, every one of these values, if I were to multiply it by 4.5, is then going to provide me all the values that match up to the corresponding size over here. Does that make sense? Okay. Another way of thinking about it is if you were to take this distance here, 18, and multiply it by 2, you're going to get what? Let's say 18 times 2. 36. Take the corresponding side over here, 4, and multiply that by 9. What do you get? 36, right? So what this means to me, and maybe in another way, is that if I take this one and allow it to enlarge by a factor of two, that's going to give me a new shape, right? Give me a new image. Then take this one and enlarge it by a factor of nine. It's going to give me a second new image, right? But those two new images should now be congruent to one another. Okay? So if you take nine of those smaller ones, okay, or enlarge this by a factor of nine, it will be equivalent to if you were to take this one and enlarge it by a factor of two. That's kind of how we can interpret uh, that um, ratio, or another way we can interpret that ratio. But now that I've got this, can I, can I link these two together and solve for what? I'm going to cross multiply, so I have 9 halves is equal to y plus 2 over 5. I'll get 45 is equal to 2y plus 4. Okay, so I'll let you kind of do that math on your own, but it should give you y to be 41 over 2, or if you want to write it 20.5, that's fine. But that's now the, the, the size of that um, value for y. Now, that doesn't tell me what tu is. tu would be that number plus 2. If we could look up the expression that tu is, uh, represent, but usually they just ask for what y is here. Um, the next thing I want to do is solve for x. So does it make sense to maybe use that ratio and that one? Okay. Um, you could use those two now that you know what y is, but you probably don't want to use 41 over 2 plus 2 over 5. That's a nasty fraction. So I would use the 9 halves equals x over 3. We get 27 equals 2x. X then will be 27 over 2, or 13.5. We'll look at it that way. And now you've got your two values for x and y. Does that kind of make sense, everybody? Okay. But one thing that you're going to be on the lookout for, because when I when I do this, when I when I start with these three um, ratios in this extended uh, proportion. 
Like, what if I would have chosen these? Because they're equal. What if I would have chosen those two? Don't I get the equation there that 5x equals 3y plus 6? If I cross multiply what I've got in this box here, does that make sense? And that is absolutely 100% true. But does it allow you to solve numerically for x or numerically for y? No. Okay. There will be maybe situations where when you plug things in, maybe each one of these has a variable in it. Maybe this is like 9x over 2. So then I would have to create an equation like this by taking those two and multiplying them together. And maybe I'd have to take these two and multiply them together and get an equation like that. And now I would have two equations that have x and y in them, right? And I have a system then that I could solve and find for x and y. Okay, so not always will you have um, one of your ratios being a number over a number, okay, being a, essentially our scale factor that we talked about yesterday. Uh, and if that happens, the algebra gets a little bit more difficult, but it is algebra that we've seen in the past. Uh, I'll do one more with you, just this one here. Just take a minute real quick. If I tell you A, B, C, D is similar to E, F, G, D, just write down the ratio. Just write down the, uh, the geometric ratio. So just don't put any numbers in or expressions in yet. Just write down uh, the similarity uh, statement ratios that you get. We should get that, right? A, B, first two letters compared to first two letters. A, B over E, F, B, C over F, G, C, D over G, D, A, D over E, D. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. Um, now that we've got those values, A, B over E, F, so we're going to figure out what A, B is. I replace that with 5. EF is going to be my Y. Now I go find BC. So after you get like this stuff written down, it's just now, you know, visual matching and, and pulling off values and substituting. It should be uh, relatively simple from there on out. Uh, so now that's going to be X was FG. CD over GD. So if I look at CD and GD, there's nothing written down here, right? So that's going to be a fraction that um, is useful for me. And then AD, AD is 9, and ED is 6. Does that make sense? Be, on, be cautious, because sometimes with problems like this, especially when they overlap like this, what the end of course exam probably would do is that they would give you AE here to be 3, and then it would hide ED but you need ED in your ratio, right? So what, you got to take 9 minus 3 to get that 6? So you use a segment addition uh, posture there. Just, just be on the lookout for that kind of stuff. You don't, it's not always 100% pulling off the values that are present. I might have to do a little bit of manipulation to get the values that I need for my ratios. But now that you have those, okay, um, again, this one probably makes sense to rewrite as 3 halves. And now I can say, I'm just going to write my two uh, proportions and let you guys solve them. But I get 5y should equal 3 halves. Is that fair to say? Okay. And I should get uh, maybe 7.5 over x equals 3 halves. Get those two values, 5 and 10 thirds for x and y, respectively. When you're done, if, if, if you have the, the need, the desire to check these, you can do this pretty easily. Once you know what y is, take 5 divided by y. 5 divided by y, so 5 divided by 10 thirds. Okay, and evaluate that, see what that is. So it turns into be 5 divided by 10 thirds, the same thing as 5 times 3 tenths. So it becomes 15 uh, over 10. Okay, which ends up being, uh, what, 3 over 2. Okay, if I take, uh, then, so we went 5 divided by y, so let's take 7 and a half divided by 5. Well, 7 and a half divided by 5, if I move my decimal place one spot there, and move my decimal for 5 one spot, I'd have 75 over 50, right? What's 75 over 50 reduced to? 
Some 25, divide both those. And give me 3 over 2 again. Does that kind of make sense? So when you're done, if you think you've got the right answers, compare those things and see if they divide to be the same number. Divide those, see if they divide to be the same number. And that number, especially the way that you divide them, should end up being your scale factor. Okay? Or if you mess the order up, it'd be the reciprocal of your scale factor. You might get 0.6 repeating um, or two-thirds if, if you mess the order up. Does this make sense? Okay. Um, I spent a lot of time on this similarity stuff. Okay, I spent some more time on it a little bit tomorrow uh, because it's, it's very important to get this understood. The sooner you understand this, the easier the upcoming things will be. Okay. Uh, I sent you guys out an email last period that has a worksheet in it. Uh, I told last class we'll make that worksheet due on Monday. It took you a little bit of time uh, over the weekend to work on that if you uh, if you don't have time tonight. Okay. Work on that, and that's all I've got for you today.